amazing yes. of his mercy and of his grace that he bestows upon his children. Yes. And I believe David picked it up in Psalm number eight and he said, Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name yes. in all of the earth. Yes. And uh, God is so good that he would think about us. Yes. And that the Bible says he comes to visit us. Hallelujah. Um, just little things on the earth. Yes. But he loves us yes. so greatly. Yes. I want you to turn with me um, today, going back to the book of Joshua. And if you recall two Sundays ago, we, we, we taught and we preached um, that first chapter of the book of Joshua and we gave you a historical perspective of Israel and part of their dilemma is miraculous and part of it is a conundrum. Part of it is wonderful because Israel is now prepared <laughs> to go into the promised land that God promised Abram in Genesis chapter number 12. It is in Genesis chapter number 12 verses 1 through 5. Abram being what we call the progenitor or the father of him. God speaks directly to Abram and he tells Abram, I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to cause you to be the father of many nations. He then goes on and tells Abram, whoever blesses you will be blessed. And whoever curses you shall be cursed. So he gives Abram a promise. And that promise is called a covenant. A covenant. And a covenant, a hold or not, is actually a contract between people. Literally, it is a contract between God and a man or a person, God and a woman, or God and, and a certain group of people. So God speaks to Abram in the Old Testament. He says, I'm going to bless you. But within the covenant, there are some clauses um, that Abram would have to maintain his focus, his diligence, his allegiance to God. And God said, if, according to Genesis 12, if you maintain these pieces of being diligent, being connected, being committed to me, that I'm going to bless you greatly. He promised Abraham to give him a land. And between Genesis chapter number 12 and Genesis chapter number 30, God begins to deal with Abram, he changes his name from Abram to Abraham, and then he begins to deal with it. And we know the story, I hope we do, that God promises Abram a child. <coughs> Abram already has an older son, 
by the name of Ishmael because his wife Sarai could not conceive and so Sarai gave Abram permission to have a child with her handmaid. The child is conceived and now Sarai feels left out. God tells him and tells her you're going to have a child via Sarah <clears throat> and it happens and then God causes or tests Abram's allegiance remember I told you that God set a covenant with Abram in Genesis chapter number 12 and a covenant is what God promises actually he swears <clears throat> to do as long as you fulfill the promises once God gives Abram a son from Sarai he then puts it to a test. And this is the wonderful thing about God, is this. Oftentimes, we want God to do something for us. We want God to perform miracles. We want God to open businesses. We want God to heal our body. We want God to restore what the canker worm has stolen. And we make God responsible to bless us. And God basically says, I will be responsible for bringing you out. But if I'm going to be responsible for blessing you and giving you miracles, and opening doors for you, closing doors so that your enemies cannot follow you, then you also have a responsibility. Because God will never allow you to make him responsible. And you are not in turn responsible. So, when God brings you out, you have a responsibility to stay out. Hallelujah. If God makes a way for you, yes. and he keeps making ways for us, yes. but oftentimes when, when God makes a covenant with us, he expects us to keep it. Hallelujah. But when we make a covenant with God, we change it. Mm -hmm. And it goes something like this, Lord, if you get me out of this situation, then I'm going to praise you. I'm going to glorify you. I'm going to give you what you deserve. I'll give you my life. I'll give you my talents. I'll give you all of these things. And as soon as God brings us out, we forget about what we promised God we would do. Now, if he brings you out, then you have a responsibility to give him praise. If he makes a way for you, and I'm not talking about a praise just for the day he brings you out. He deserves a praise for the rest of your life. Somebody open your mouth and say, not a conditional praise. Not, not a conditional blessing. But God wants you to bless him for the rest of your life. It goes something like this. I will bless the Lord at his praise shall continually. Look at somebody say all times and continually. Thank you.
Oftentimes we forget what we have promised God. And God says, I'm going to make you responsible. And when things happen in our life, it's so easy to blame God when things happen. Because it goes something like this. If God loved me so much, then why would this happen? If, if, if God was really God, why would he allow me to endure so, so much pain or humiliation? But we must understand that we also have a responsibility to live for God. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And could it be that some things that are happening with us and to us and through us is because we have abdicated or we have not completed our responsibility to God. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. Could it be that America is in so much trouble right now with Trump? Oh, come on, somebody. It's because we have forgotten how to pray. We've forgotten how to fast. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. So we want to blame it on Trump. It's not Trump's fault. It's not even Obama's fault. It is the righteous fault. Because when things are going wrong, we know how to get on our face on. and pray until God changes the situation. Changes the situation. Touch your neighbor and say, I am a change agent. Man, it's not going to stay this way forever because I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray to God. I'm going to cry. I'm going to yell until God changes. In Joshua chapter 1, Moses now is deceased. And I read that scripture two weeks ago. Moses is deceased. And God gives a new covenant. And in the first chapter of Joshua, God tells Joshua, my servant, Moses, is dead. <laughs> but let me tell you something. Just because Moses is dead, the anointing is still alive. <laughs> look, at your, look at your neighbor and say, don't let the anointing die. No, 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 no. A man can die. Yes. But the anointing must not die. Yes. And God said, I'm not going to let Moses or Moshe die on a mountain and that anointing goes with him. God says, as I was with Moshe, so shall I be with you. Amen. Y'all didn't hear that. Yes. And he says, tell the people mm -hmm. wherever they step. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody. Ooh, hallelujah. Y'all don't understand. Look at your neighbor and say, what's the sole of my feet? <laughs> my feet. He didn't say the toes of my feet. He didn't say the heel of my feet. But the soul is in the middle. Yes. And what God was yes. saying, once you step, Amen. you can't go back. Hallelujah. He said, now when, Hallelujah. if you tiptoe, it's like jumping in a pool 
boom, and you put your toes in, and then you come out. You stick it out. God said, now, if your sole of your feet goes past your toes now, and in the middle it touches the property, it's yours. Y'all didn't hear that. He didn't tell them to touch it. He didn't tell them to name it. He didn't even tell them to claim it. He said, just walk. The moment that the ball of your feet touch the land, or whatever land you touch, it shall belong to you. The devil wants you to fuss. He wants you to cuss. He wants you to complain and he wants you to cry. God says, shut your mouth and walk.
Yes. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I thank you. But God says, I want you there. Amen. I don't want you here. Oh, my God. I'm making notes. He doesn't want you here. He wants you. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm going to say it again. He doesn't want you here. He wants you there. And what's the difference between here and there? Look at somebody say, it's a T. It's a T. The difference between here and there is a T. There. Wow. So the only difference between here and there is a T. Mm. <laughs> That's what happens when you're a full-time pastor and you're sitting on the roof trying to get close to God. He said T represents there you go. Time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's going to change your here to there in time. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. So you're trying to rush God. Have mercy. Come on. you trying to blackmail God. Oh. Hallelujah. To get you from here to there. And God said, there are some lessons. That oh, I want God. you to learn Hallelujah. in time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If you don't learn the lesson in time, uh -huh. you can get there and be back to here. Yes. <laughs>
transitioning, mm -hmm. moving from your here to your new here, uh -huh. there must be. Come on now. Ooh. Everybody say opposition. Oppositions. Mm. Mm -hmm. Before you can get to your new here. Uh oh. They do exist. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> Holland. Play game. Well, that's in right. the church that's and outside right. the church. That's well, right. Thank you. Come on, yes. somebody. Yes. yes. And the more anointed you are, uh -oh. the greater your haters are Woo. in the church. Amen. See, if you just got a normal anointing, uh -huh. then you might have haters outside the church. Uh -huh. But when God has destined you for greatness, uh -huh. well, the people that used to be your friend, Hallelujah. and you can pray when you were broke, Hallelujah. now become jealous of you. Woo. Because now your mind is made up. I cried my last tear. I'm not going to complain anymore. I'm going to just wait until my change comes. You can't make it now. I know too much. Opposition Thank you. and obstacles. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now you need to write this down. We're going to read the scripture here. I may preach a little bit, but you need to put this down. The Lord spoke to me about this. The Holy Spirit did. Never operate in your second calling. Hmm. Okay. Never operate in your second call. Always operate in your first call. My God. What does that mean? <clears throat> what that means is this. <clears throat> God gifts you. And he gives you and anoints you to have power. And that power is dunamis. Mm -hmm. The word dunamis in the Greek means the ability to complete. The ability to <clears throat> complete. The anointing destroys the yoke, the heaviness, or the obstacle. The power gives you the ability to complete what God has assigned you to do. Amen. This is why the Holy Ghost is quintessential in our life. Amen. The Holy Ghost was never given just for you to feel good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And if your Holy Ghost only makes you dance, but it never gives you power uh -huh. to overcome obstacles, all you have are emotions. And there are a lot of people in church, all they have are and you've got to serve God with emotions. Why? Because emotions are connected to our soul. Mm -hmm. And so God gives us emotions mm -hmm. that we can serve him with fervor. Mm -hmm. We can serve him with enthusiasm and excitement. It is the flavor of life. <laughs> emotions. But God said, I don't only want to give you emotions. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. 
But these signs should follow them that believe. Mark chapter 16, 16 and 7. In my name, they shall be able to repel demons. Come on, somebody. They will speak with new tongues. If they drink any deadly thing, come on, somebody. Amen. The sick will recover. Yes. Amen. Oh yes. You. Touch your neighbor and say, yes. stop trying to call Bishop. Hallelujah. You lay your hands on them. You are just as anointed as I am. Come on, a different type of anointing, but just as anointed. And he said, these signs shall believe. The sick shall recover. Come on now. And that's just not a physical sickness. But that's a spiritual sickness. An emotional sickness. A mental sickness. No one should be in your presence for years and not feel the power of God. Come on somebody. And the greater your anointing is. And the greater you use your anointing. People can step into your presence. And you not even lay your hands on them. And they are delivered. Just by looking at you. Just by hearing your... Oh, come on, somebody. Some of you are just delivered not because I laid my hands on you. Or put some sticky oil on you. Just because you're in the presence of an anointed person. And because I'm free, you are free. Keep the sun and set free. Touch your neighbor and say, if I'm free, baby, you free. You free. Come on, somebody. If I'm free, you can't stay in my presence and not be free. You either gonna get out of my presence or you gonna go oh, come on somebody. Yes. I want people to feel uncomfortable. Yes. 